Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about batteries and voltage and electrical things and it's aimed at those of you that maybe aren't from electrical background and who get confused about the whole voltage, current, volts, amps, resistance, ohms and all those different things as well. Now I have um, an introduction to remote control and an RC basics series, I'll put links down below, uh, that cover an awful lot of the basics if you're new to the radio controlled hobby and maybe don't have that kind of background which you kind of need if you're building or troubleshooting. There's already lots and lots of videos but this one is specifically about voltage, current and resistance and how they all go together. I'm going to use an analogy that I use an awful lot when I'm explaining this that seems to work really well that takes a slightly abstract stuff that you're going to come across when you're talking about things like batteries, current and voltage into something that's a little bit easier to understand. So this whole thing about electricity, voltage, current, amps, ohms can be really, really complicated. But hopefully by going through these slides, it'll make a little bit more sense. Now here on this slide is a very simple circuit. We have a battery on one side, we have a switch in the line coming from the positive terminal of the battery, and then we have a little bulb in a holder on the right hand side. Now convention is normally that the red wires are always connected to the positive terminals of batteries, and black wires are normally denote the negative side of the battery, or ground as it's sometimes called. So always try and keep that, whenever you're doing any wiring, it just means if anyone else comes along to it, or you come back to it after a number of months, you can remember which is which. But in this instance, of course, the switch is off, so there, there isn't a complete circuit. When we switch the switch on, then surprise, surprise, the bulb lights up. Now, actually, there's a number of things in this little circuit, and it's kind of covering all of the basics. So let me cover what's going on with this battery, switch, and bulb to make it all work. The first thing to think about, of course, is a voltage. Now, voltage, or volts, is what the battery is providing. And we have one and a half volt batteries, little double A AA or AAA batteries. We have nine volt batteries in radio control. We have 3S uh, 12 volt batteries. We have 4S 16 volt batteries and so on. And the voltage is coming from the battery. The next thing is the electrical current measured in amps and that is what is flowing around the circuit. So it comes out of the positive terminal kind of flows through the switch through the bulb and then goes back into the battery via that black wire and it's running around all the time we have the switch closed and it's actually the current that is making that bulb light up the last one of this trio is resistance now everything has an electrical resistance and it resists the flow of the current. So that's a bit of a weird one to understand. So let me talk about these three things in a slightly more practical way that I tend to find that people can follow a lot easier. Let me replace that electrical battery with a tank of water. So assume here the water tank on the left hand side connected to a tap. Now the tap is currently turned off, but there is pressure in the water tank. We know if we knocked a nail through the bottom of it and pulled that nail out, then the water would come out in quite an impressive stream. The bigger the water tank, the more water pressure there is. Now if we open the tap, then what happens, the water will flow from the water tank through the pipe, through the tap, and out into the bucket or whatever we're filling with water. Now, this, interestingly, is exactly what is going on with the electrical system. So let me just change the name of the water flow to water current. And there's a reason that I've done that. Because all of the pieces that are in that electrical stuff, that's kind of a bit abstract and a bit difficult to understand, is here in this simple bit of plumbing. The water pressure from the water tank, either because the water tank is pressurized or because it's raised above the ground, that water pressure is exactly the same as voltage. The current flowing through the pipe on the way to the tap and out of the tap is exactly the same as electrical current. It works in the same way. So it's actually the water pressure 
pushing the water through the pipe is causing a water to current to flow. Just like the voltage in the electrical system pushing on the electrons in the wires causes a current to flow. And the last one, which is resistance, is a lot easier to understand in this analogy. The resistance is the size of the opening of pipe. So if, for example, the pipe coming out of the water tank is only the size of a drinking straw and we open the tap, then the water current or the amount of water flowing through that thin straw, even if the water pressure is incredibly high, is going to be quite low. Similarly, if that pipe is six foot or two meters wide and we have a big valve or tap at the end and we open that, then even with a relatively low water pressure, there's going to be an awful lot of water will rush through that pipe very quickly. And that is the way I would recommend you think about it if you're not an electrician. The water pressure is the voltage, the water current and the electrical current are kind of the same thing, and the resistance is the kind of size of opening of the pipe. So now we understand that a little bit better, hopefully, let me go back to that electrical system. So now we're back to the battery, which is kind of like our water tank. The switch is like the tap, and then we have the bulb on the right hand side. Now, interestingly, there is a really simple way to figure out the relationship between the battery voltage, the electrical current measured in amps and the resistance in a circuit and if you know any two of those you can very quickly figure out the third and this is what electrical engineers do on a daily basis so if for example in this particular situation we have a 12 volt battery on the left hand side the kind of thing that you might have in your car or motorbike and when we turn the bulb on we can see that there's a one amp flowing through that circuit then we know that the resistance of that bulb when it's lit up is actually 12 ohms because we divide the 12 volts by the one amp. Now it doesn't have to be a bulb, it can actually be a resistor or something else doing something in the model. It might be the motor, the ESC, it might be a battery illuminator circuit, it might be a flight controller, whatever. So let's find the resistance of the resistor that's in this particular circuit. So again, we can see that there's half an amp flowing around the circuit. And again, that's like the water flow. And this time it's a nine volt battery. So there's a little bit less pressure pushing that electrical current around the circuit. So if we divide the voltage, which is nine volts by the current, which is half an amp, we can see that that resistor is actually 18 ohms. And that ohm sign is that kind of weird symbol that looks like the bottom half of a stick man with bandy legs. There are a couple of things to think about radio control. Just like a water tank, a battery will get emptied. The faster you pull the electrical energy out the battery, just like the faster you pull the water out of a water tank, the faster the, the battery will be completely empty. So you'll find that batteries in the hobby have things called a C rating and multiply the C rating by the battery capacity to tell you how many amps is the maximum that you can pull. Trying to pull more than that electrical current, again measured in amps, will cause damage to the battery, cause it to overheat and potentially damage things around it as well. Other thing to think about is battery eliminator circuits are there to drop the voltage down from a battery that may be using for flight to a lower battery that we can use for some electronics. So a common battery eliminator circuit that you'll see in radio control is something that will take the battery voltage, which might be 12 or 16 volts from the LiPo battery, down to 5 volts that something like a flight controller will use. Again, those battery eliminator circuits will have a maximum current rating that they are rated for. It's usually in the order of one, two, three or four amps. Never connect more things to that battery eliminator circuit that will pull more current than that battery eliminator circuit is rated for. That will cause problems for the battery eliminator circuit and cause it to shut down and none of the things connected to it will work very well at all. The final thing I mentioned in this before your brains explode is talking about what a short circuit is. A short circuit is usually where we see the magic smoke pop out of something and that's because we've made a mistake with our wiring or we have a short between the two sides of the battery. That means that then there isn't any real resistance between the positive and negative battery terminals. And as we've seen, if you have a really low resistance, then there's nothing to stop the current flying around. And that very high current that flows through the wires is the stuff that will cause things to vaporize and smoke. And that's where the magic smoke comes from. 
So there it is. Hopefully that was an awful lot easier to follow. So remember the analogy of the water-based system. The water tank is the battery, the electrical current is like the water current, and the resistance is kind of how thick the pipe is and how big the, uh, the opening in the tap is, how you've got that open. Because if you think of it like that, then you will not get confused. So again, check out those other series on the channel, the RC Basics and some of the Introduction to series, links in the description. And if you have other ideas for videos or things that you'd like to know as a follow on to this, maybe what uh, what's are, what what's, or something like that, then do put it in the comments and I'll make another video. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.